do it. <laughs> well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, Mr. Kennedy, I'm not going to be the vote of thanks, but thank you very much for joining us tonight. And uh, another one of our doctors, Gail Woon, is here. And we have so many friends and supporters of Save the Bays and the Waterkeeper Alliance. I'd like to thank the Deputy Prime Minister, uh, my Member of Parliament, in my constituency, for being here tonight and uh, gracing us with some kind words and uh, indicating the government's commitment to the environment. Um, I'd like just to follow on from what Bobby said about Bimini, because it is a real crime that has been committed to the community of Porgy Bay and Allistown and South Bimini. Because you have, all of you have heard me speak about how anchor projects, these heads of agreements, they are like a, an AIDS virus to the body politic of the Bahamas. Because creating these bubbles of foreign investment that are exclusive to the developer and to incoming uh, homeowners is not beneficial to the Bahamas. And Bimini is the epitome of that kind of abuse because you go through the gates and it's like Disney World. And there are curbs and there are sidewalks and there's beautiful landscaping and there's a casino there and there are beautiful condominiums and houses being built. And there's a walkway, I walked all the way up along there. No Bahamians were walking up and down that. Now I have nothing against foreigners, I have nothing against developers. I promote development. I too am a capitalist. I too want developers here. So Save the Bays is not against development. I'd like to emphasize that. It's, as Bobby said, it's the way that it's done. So that it doesn't steal the value of what belongs to us as locals. And so in Bimini, because we still don't have, and I beg the Deputy Prime Minister for the few years, and hopefully more that they will be there, to finally pass an Environmental Protection Act. Please, we want to let them know that we want it, please. And also to pass, well, we have passed it, it to bring into effect a Freedom of Information Act that will help all of us for transparency, for democracy. Because God forbid the FNM should lose the next election, and then the PLP come back in and do everything in secret again. Deputy Prime Minister, you won't be able to find out what they're doing. So pass the act before they come back in. So, please. So, ladies and gentlemen, anchor projects are a sin to the Bahamian uh, development landscape. Because you have no local government. All the casino taxes don't go into the community of Bimini. Sam Beauty doesn't go in there. Business license taxes don't go in there. They get crown land by digging up the dredge and creating all this new, these new islands, five or six new islands that they sell for five or six or ten million dollars for every little house they put in it. But you know, the old concept of having to get on bended knee, and I'll do it, get on bended knee and beg a developer to come in and give away our crown land, give away stamp duty, give away VAT, I don't think we do that anymore. Give away uh, business license taxes. No, he never gives up VAT. It's the VAT man. We just don't want him to increase it, that's all. <laughs> so, but we cannot have developments that are divorced from the community, like Bimini. And that is a real issue. That It's like, I don't want to call Bimini a slum because it isn't, but when you look at the difference in infrastructure and affluence, and how can all those foreigners come to Bimini and enjoy the northern part in Bimini World Resorts and yet see that the medical facilities, you know, the educational facilities, the Biminites don't have good running water often, they have issues with power, etc. You can't allow developments to come in and to be invaders, so, yeah, they're invaders and not investors. Capo is an invader of North Bimini. He's really not a community investor. So yes, the Bahamians get to pick up the towels. They get to you know mow the lawn. They get to clean the, the, the rooms. They get to rent a couple of taxis now and again. 
But one more thing they, do, they can't do because, and I'm glad my minister is here, because of exchange control laws, no Bahamian, everybody else in the world can own a piece of the you know, of, of Carnival or RCCL or Atlantis or Hutchison, all the big developments that happen in the Bahamas by publicly traded companies. Everybody else in the world can get profits and dividends from them, but not one Bahamian can. So if there's something you can do, Minister of Finance, please, it's to find a way to allow Bahamians to participate in the profits that all the publicly traded companies make. That's why they come to the Bahamas. They make so much money, they love it here. We'd like to participate in it too. But we have to have, when investors come, they need to become part of the community. We need to increase the educational facilities, increase the public infrastructure, increase the health facilities, increase the opportunities for the police, the ambulance, everybody to have better services to provide to the community. We can't have separatisms like separatist communities like we have. So I've spoken too long, guys. You didn't come in and oh, okay. Thank you very much. <laughs> I think we have time for